Hey everybody. I think I have everything closed that I can close. It's already telling me it's dropping frames again. I don't know why only Facebook is doing this and why Zoom doesn't seem to have that problem. Who knows? Okay, so horses and pressure. There's so much to be said about this. And I just added some definition and some words that are associated with pressure to kind of just get the juices flowing and get you to think about the word pressure. In my world, in the Genuine Connections Horse Womanship world, I don't like to use the word pressure because of all the negative connotations that are associated with it. Now, other people might say there is, you know, a positive and negative to everything, and that's absolutely true. But for horses, from my perspective, from what I've seen in my horses and my students' horses and over the 30 plus years that I have been uh, around horses, pressure is a negative thing. And pressure to various degrees and forms holds the horse in self-preservation and self-protection. That's why I like to use the word feel so that we put front and center that we don't escalate pressure, that we don't use excessive pressure, that we don't use an effective phase four, that we don't use pressure to make or cause things to happen or to manipulate or intimidate or anything like that. It is a feel. And the feel is 100 grams or three ounces very 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 important we never go above that and in general if your horse does not feel like for example Linda's horse Bobby is one of these horses when Linda turns Bobby turns and he follows that feel and there's always slack in the lead rope and that lead rope never becomes taut so um, what did I do with my stick? I meant to bring it in here. Okay. I don't know what happened to it. Never mind. So when you take a string, right? You take a, a string or a cable or whatever it is, and you have slack in it, right? In this cable right now, there is slack, despite that it's sticking up, right? But there is slack. If it's taut, it's like this, right? Slack is like this. When I start to move my hand here, I can already feel it. I can already feel it. I don't have to do this, right? And I want you to really try that. At what point when you take the slack, whether it's a cable or a lead rope or whatever it is, at what point when you take the slack out, can you already feel, right? You do not have to have a taut lead rope for your horse to follow a feel because most of the time, and Sandy and me talked about that today, your horse actually objects to this, objects to that. They don't like it. And if you try that right now with me, see how this feels, right? The pulling and how it feels when you put intent energy and in, body language in this and you just follow. There is a flow to it, right? Cindy was talking today about that Bergie has flow at liberty, but he loses his flow with a lead rope and then he gets agitated when he feels the pull, right? So 100 grams, three ounces and it can be mental, emotional, and a physical feel. So us changing, like let's, here's, here's you, here's your horse, you changing your intent, your energy, right? Your horse should already be following, at the very least at the body language. If your horse consistently needs you to use your tool, then you have not yet helped your horse understand 
to follow your intent, energy, and body language. And that's when it becomes tricky because that's when our horse starts to watch the tool, right? So that has all something to do with pressure because most humans use their tools to apply pressure, right? When you buy a martingale, why do you buy the tool? Because you want to apply pressure to the rein so that the horse cannot put his head up, mechanical pressure. If you use spurs, right? then you want to you're not just gonna have those spurs being on your your shoe without ever using them your intent is to apply pressure so your horse moves away from the pressure right this is what we humans associate with pressure we want to get things done we make things happen and if you listen to um, or you read my comments, words that are associated with pressure, load, stress, thrust, comprehension, compressing, squeezing, crushing, weight, heaviness, coercion, force, compulsion, constraint, duress, oppression, enforcement, insistence, demand, entreaty, not sure what that means, goading, pestering, provocation, harassment, nagging, harrying, badgering, intimidation, arm twisting, pressurization, persuasion, influence, bad assery. That could be a good thing, <laughs> depending. Uh, strain, stress, tension, heat, burden, load, weight, drain, trouble, care, adversity, difficulty, hassle. Okay? Feel. Follow a feel mentally, emotionally, physically, intent, energy, body language, using your tools for clarification, for understanding we're not making things happen. When we're making things happen, when we're causing, when we're manipulating, when we're intimidating, we are domineering, right? And we do not come from dominance. We do not come from being passive and non-assertive, we are the lead. And the horse follows the lead mare, no questions asked. Why does the horse follow the lead? Because the lead has the wisdom, the experience, and the willingness to make benevolent decisions for the herd of two. So this last thing, you, you as a heart-centered person, you already have that. Right? Even if you have limited experience, even if you have limited wisdom, because wisdom comes from experience, you have that heart-centeredness that you want to do the right thing for your horse. Right, And the rest you're learning in the masterclass in the mentorship. And the more you participate and the more you send videos in and the more you ask questions, the more you set yourself and your horse up for success. Right, So... Having said that, when we have horses that have not yet learned to follow a feel, what do we do? Again, by nature, horses lean into pressure, push into pressure, pull into pressure, to the point where when you tie up a horse that has not learned to yield to pressure, they sometimes kill themselves pulling backwards and flipping over and then whatever they do in self-preservation and self-protection instead of making one or two steps forward when the pressure would release. And this is really, really, really important to know because this is how important it is to be, for you to be careful around the subject pressure. It's very, very important, especially when it comes to horses especially when it comes to horses that have not learned to yield to a feel, to yield, to follow a feel. And these can be young horses and these can be old horses because most horses never learn to follow the feel the way I teach it. And those are horses that we usually call lazy, uh, dull, unresponsive, um, argumentative, bossy, pushy, those are all horses that do not follow a feel. Why do they not follow a feel? Because the human has never taken the time, the effort, and the consistency 
to teach the horse the proper response. So how do we teach our horse to follow a feel? It starts with a happy horse inventory. It starts with your approach. There can the feel of your personal space by invitation only. When you allow your horse to push and prod on your personal space, to enter your personal space uninvited, you're teaching your horse to be dull. You're teaching your horse to not follow a feel. You're teaching your horse to... Um, you're not teaching your horse to follow a feel. It's very important. That's where it starts. The next task is feeding. When you allow your horse to push into your personal space during feeding times, to put the nose in the bucket before you're putting it down, um, to take the hay, you know, like with Sari and Navi, I am super careful when I go into the paddock because they love to stand at the gate, right? These horses have never learned to be out on a trail system. They go out on the trail system for a little bit and then they stand at the gate and they're like, where's, where's the human that could be potentially more food? They rest in the front paddock, right? So I'm extra careful when I go into the gate because they're standing there that I make my personal space known. I honor my personal space. And when I go into the paddock and I turn around and I always have the hay, you know, my arm over the hay, that they don't come in from behind and suddenly grab a piece of hay. That is not following a feel because the feel is to not come in my personal space uninvited. And right now I have hay and my personal space is not available. So we're talking about the feeding. When it comes to haltering, we don't just want to be able to put the halter on our horse's head. We want to be able to take that halter and apply a little bit of feel and our horse's nose follows accordingly. And we're doing that very gentle. 100 grams, three ounces, nose over here nose over there and I'm just this is the halter right when we were working with a rescue horse what did I do I put my hand when you have the the halter here right this is the halter and this is my hand so I simply slipped my hand into the halter right where the nose is and I was simply guiding the halter I never did this I never held on to the halter, right? Because that is perceived as pressure and that can cause the horse to be claustrophobic, especially a horse that is already hurting and has a limited amounts of tolerance and acceptance. So all I did was I had my hand in there and I applied a feel to the halter. And when the horse leaned against me, instead of me pushing against my horse, I just did a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and then the horse willingly brought his head over and then his weight would shift on this side so that his owner could pick up the other foot. So here with a halter you're already teaching your horse to follow a feel. When it comes to leading, right, most students that enter the course, your horse has some idea of leading, right? Some might think they're leading and they're passing you when they're on the lead rope or they're lagging behind and they're taking the slack out of the lead rope. And some horses might just be constantly right there with you. Slack in the lead rope, walk, trot, stop, back up, to the left, to the right. And that means that our horse follows a feel, right? This is for horses that have previously already had a little bit of an idea. So whenever my horse starts, when I'm leading my horse and whenever my horse starts to lean back and to leave my idea of walking forward, I'm gonna add a little bit of energy behind, right? 
rhythmic motion, something my horse cannot lean into, but it is rhythmic motion with direction, right? It's not just back, forth, back, forth, rhythmic motion. This means nothing, right? The rhythmic motion has energy in it and the energy has been added to the flow of energy to help my horse remember to put slack in the lead rope and stay at the speed that I am asking. It's very important. Whenever you notice that your horse slows down, right? Then we're bringing a little bit of extra energy in the equation because our horse has already agreed to walk with us, to trot with us, whatever our horse is doing in that moment. When our horse starts to get faster, then we're making space unavailable, right? And if I would make space unavailable by putting my hand on my horse's chest and pushing backwards, most likely my horse will start pushing into me. Or if I pull backwards on the lead rope, right, then the horse pushes into the lead rope even more. When you give your horse something to lean into, your horse will lean, right? When you give nothing to lean into, your horse will not lean, okay? That's why lateral flexion is so important. So we start out with simply guiding the halter and applying a little bit of a feel, a little bit of a feel. And then we can transfer that to lateral flexion. Lateral flexion, super important. You've heard me talk about, you see it all the time, people teaching lateral flexion and the horse is actually leaning into the pressure, taking the slack out of the lead rope and people are cranking their horse's head around. I want my horse, when I take a feel, the nose goes with that feel and my horse can keep slack in the lead rope. That's when I know my horse is yielding to follow a feel or yielding to pressure, right? And I want to do it evenly on the left side and I want to do it evenly on the right side. When it comes to picking up feet, that is all about yielding. Angel has talked a lot about teaching Harry to shift his weight, to yield to the feel, to the other side, so that she could overcome the horse's tendency to be defensive about his or his feet, right? All the way to breaking the farrier's hand. So we had to be very careful. So we're doing the first step, which is follow my feel, yield to my feel by shifting your weight over. Then the next feel would be, can you lift your leg when I'm asking for it? Can you follow my feel no matter where I guide your foot? When I guide your foot in a circle, can you follow that feel all the way down? Can you follow the feel of my intention to keep your foot on the tippy toe instead of wham, slamming it down? Those are all those tiny little minute details that are so important when it comes to following a feel, yielding a feel. So now we're, um, we, we're at uh, picking feet, grooming, right? We don't want to tie our horse to the, um, let me turn that off, I'm sorry about that. We don't want our horse to have to be, you know, in cross ties because our horse is not following a feel. The feel could be when you're grooming your horse, let's stand still together. That thought can be a feel, right? Let's not move forward yet. That can be a feel. Teaching our horse to follow a feel backwards. For example, following a feel was drifter with me leading behind. That was following a feel. So all the happy horse inventory tasks are designed for your horse, A, for you to notice your horse's thresholds, for you to um, look at healthy posture, right? Because relaxation, healthy posture, but also to look at, is my horse following the feel of the exercise? 
is very, very important. So now um, I want to go particularly to horses that have not learned to follow a feel and they're young horses, right? Because most older horses, they have kind of an idea and you just need to re-educate and refine and provide clarity that we're not applying pressure. We're asking our horse to follow a feel. But what with a horse that is a youngster, that is maybe even a baby, how do we do that? So many horses are traumatized at a few days of age when the human feels the need to wrestle the halter on the horse and for the rest of their life until somebody does something about it, they have that experience associated with the tool. And we will always have a certain amount of brace and tension and stress and anxiety when we're using that tool, unless we're taking the meaning out of the halter, right? So it will behoove us to be super, super careful with our young horses. Now, having said that, you will make mistakes. That's just what it is. We humans, we make mistakes. And that's when the only thing that I can really, really hone into and stress when it comes to that, because there's so much to be said about that, is look at what you did, look at what it cost, assess what you want to do from now on, assess what you never want to do, and look at the outcome you want to achieve. Take inventory, take inventory, take inventory. It does not help us to blame ourselves. It doesn't help to blame our horse that it waste, that is wasted energy. But putting energy in your inventory and getting clarity why what happened happened is really, really vital. So for you members in the mentorship group, please, please, please have that camera going. Even if you can only, you know, and I say only 10 minutes is a lot. I see a lot in 10 minutes. Only when, even if you have your 10 minutes, right? Keep that camera going because something might just happen. We're like, wow, I'm flabbergasted. I don't know what to do with this, right? So it's very important that you take advantage of all the goodness that the mentorship offers you. Angel was saying the other day, it's the pink, di pink, di the pink diamond, the pink diamond in the haystack, right? It's really, really, really special. I don't know one other program out there besides mine that gives you that kind of support that I give for that kind of money that I charge. I don't know anybody. If you know somebody, let me know, but I don't know anybody. So. You have signed up, you have all these wonderful tools available, make sure you take advantage of it, right? But going back to the youngster, you can pretty much, what I do with Sari and Navi, you can apply that to a youngster because I am restarting the relationship with those horses. So anybody that had trouble with a horse leaning into pressure, I have said, watch the 90 minute educational video on the hurt bound website because there is where I teach you to help your horse to follow a feel without a lead rope. Because if your horse is worried about the lead rope or if your horse has never had a lead rope on them, there is a possibility of trauma and drama, right? So I do it without the lead rope. That's why I say, you know, put the lead rope around the horse's neck. Do it in a way where your horse cannot choke him or herself. Do it in, in, in a way where it's safe, right? So you want to be careful how you do that when you wrap it around. But in general, just allowing your horse to carry the tool. In general, putting the um, lead rope on the horse's back. We've talked about in the course about putting the heavy side of the lead rope on the side between you and your horse, if the thing moves and slides off, that it does come between you and your horse, right? It's very important. And that we start out with following a feel without the lead rope, just like I show in the Sari and Navi footage. 
So that means you're starting out at liberty and you get that really, really good. Now, having said that, if you have trouble in the happy horse inventory that your horse pushes on your personal space, you cannot skip that and go to the next step. It's really, really vital. If we have trouble during approach and feeding times, our horse swinging his or her butt towards us, pushing into our personal space, demanding food, pinning ears, and you have not solved that problem, unless I'm telling you that's okay, focus on this task for now to help resolve the problem. You cannot move forward. That's very important. So when we have issues during approach and, and feeding times, A, it's important to continue to bring your videos. It's very important so that we can see whether we're making progress or not. And unless I tell you to move ahead, then make sure that you stick with those tasks and solve them. If you stay for any extended period of time in a certain task and you're not making consistent progress, then something isn't going right. There's something going on that causes your horse to not make progress. And how we show up, what we bring to the table, what we do, what we don't do, is really what our horse's actions and reactions and responses shape. So we need to look back at us, right? What am I doing that my horse does X, Y, Z? And the next question is, okay, now that I know that, how do I need to change? So this is my thoughts on this whole idea of pressure, and I could probably talk about it for a whole day, but I wanted to give you some food for thought before we talk about that in detail tomorrow night, Friday, I will do a special session about this subject. And what I would like for you ladies to do is to listen to this segment and give me feedback below. I want your questions. I want your feedback. I want your aha moments. I want you, I know that, but I haven't done it. Um, I had no clue. Now I'm going to do that. Anything that you can think of, I want to use this as a brainstorming session until... hey, let's not make it Friday, let's make it Saturday to get adequate feedback and to in include everything um, in it that we need. So Saturday, I will do a special at six o'clock prior to watching videos around the subject of pressure, horses yielding to pressure, following a feel, not following a feel, how to teach it, what to do, what not to do with your help. So Pop your comments below. Let me know. This is a group experience, a group exercise. The more comments I get, the happier you make me. And thank you so much for listening. As always, be blessed and with lots of love because love makes everything better, including our horsemanship. Bye for now.